we've got something special here. The Raspberry Pi Foundation have just released the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Let's check it out. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It has a lot of upgrades. It's not just a, a little improvement. They've changed a lot of hardware on here. Let's have a look at uh, the things that matter the most. The form factor itself is the same as the Model B, so the holes are in the same place. However, there are some changes. It won't fit in the existing cases because uh, the power connector, the, these two micro HDMI ports, yes, it has two HDMI ports. And on this side, the Ethernet connector is now over here on, on this side instead of over here. Uh, they're, they're the big changes to the components that have been populated on this board. Uh, the rest of this, though, is much the same as the Model 3B Plus uh, in terms of board layout and, uh, and, and the actual size and dimensions. Let's get straight to the CPU. Uh, this is a 1.5 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A72. The most impressive part about the CPU is that it's a 28 nanometer technology. The predecessor, the 3B Plus, was using a 40 nanometer technology. So the amount of power needed to perform uh, anything has come down significantly. With that said, it's using a bit more power as, as a whole, but we'll cover off on that in, in a moment. The RAM is a big leap forward. We're now using uh, 2,400 megahertz uh, LPDDR4 RAM, uh, and it comes in three variants, uh, one gigabyte, two gigabyte, and four gigabyte. So that's a really big deal. That's almost a 2.5x in terms of bandwidth coming from the 900 megahertz RAM on the 3B Plus to the 2400 megahertz on the new on the new model. Uh, and I really do look forward to see how this device gets used at home, in schools, in commercial products, because between this CPU and this new RAM, there's a lot to be done. Moving to the outside of the board, we have the USB-C power connector. Uh, you need 15 watts to power this board uh, and all its peripheries in, in its full capacity. So USB-C helps make that possible. We have two micro HDMI ports that are 4K compatible. We have the camera uh, CSI port, the same four pole uh, connector for your composite video and your stereo output. And over here, we've got our two USB 2 uh, connectors, two USB 3 connectors, true gigabit Ethernet. This is for the PoE hat, which brings PoE capability to the board. We have our standard 40 pin GPIO. From what I understand, it's the same Wi Fi chip that's used on the existing board. Well, at least it performs in a very similar way. Though, interestingly, on the boards that I have, there's no, there's no Raspberry Pi logo etched onto the top. And then there's the trusty DSi display port. So the moment I got this, I set up this rig that you see here. I've got my two Audi um, power analysis devices, which read the power going into the boards. They both supply and uh, analyze the power going in. I have my uh, connectors going over to my shared keyboard and mouse, and I've got my HDMI leads going through to the, uh, to the display. This is the Raspberry Pi 4, this is the 3B Plus, and they were running side by side through a bunch of tests. Uh, rather than take you through each of those tests, one by one. Here's a chart that I put together. So in this column I have the test that, that I performed with a quick note if there was anything unique about it. This column is the outcome for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and this column is the outcome for the Raspberry Pi 4B. This column shows the change uh, contextual to how well or poorly the Raspberry Pi 4B performed against the 3B Plus. So the first test we'll look at is actually the boot time. Interestingly the Pi 4 booted a little bit slower than the Pi 3B Plus. I would say that's to do with something going on at a hardware level. During my, during my measurements, I actually observed that there was a period of time at the, at the beginning of the boot where uh, not a lot was going on. Uh, and, then, and then it triggered into the same pattern, like the energy usage as the 3B+. I would imagine that there's a chip or maybe a couple that require a little bit more initialization during that boot sequence. Idle power, the four, uses a fair amount more energy. So it's, it's comparable, if you were comparing this to 3B+, it's negative 35% of a, of a change. So it's using more energy to perform the same uh, idle outcome. The next test was peak power. This is the amount of energy being used while the uh, CPU is fully loaded. Uh, both devices performed about the same. The Pi 4 was a little bit better. However, it was performing 27% better at full load compared to the 3B+, when running the, uh, the Sysbench Primes benchmark. On a single thread, the Pi 4 was about 21% better. Here we've got uh, a RAM test for bandwidth using MBW. 
This is a massive improvement. The Pi 4 was running 110% faster than the existing model. To test the GPU, I've used the Video GL32 package. Uh, the Pi 4 uh, performed 15.9% better. Here we have another big improvement. So the Ethernet port on the Pi 4 is performing at a genuine one gigabit connection. So that's a 181% increase uh, in, in reference to the existing model. Wi-Fi on both 2.4 and on uh, 5 gigahertz was about the same. Uh, I would imagine that a similar technology is being used uh, to achieve that. And of course, the Pi 4 now has USB 3, which means uh, read and writing to things like this, a solid state external hard drive, are uh, going to be a lot better. So for, for both of those, it's pretty much incomparable. You know, you're talking about a, a lift in performance of 300 plus percent and 600 plus percent uh, for read write. So there you have it, a side by side of the 3B Plus and the new Raspberry Pi 4. I hope you got something out of this. That's a quick tour of the hardware on board and some of the benchmarks that uh, compare the features of the new hardware. If you have any questions, let me know. Likewise, stay tuned for more Raspberry Pi goodness.